so what I'm going to do now is go back to the boot directory and I'm going to modify that command line text file just to swap over the boot so I can get back to the Raspberry Pi boot so that I can add in the extra um, functionality that I mentioned. I'll uh, mention in detail what that's about when um, log into there. So all I need to do is reboot and this should now reboot back to the SD card. Okay, and there we are back in the um, RPI system, the actual operating system. So what I want to do is get the web browser back up and the terminal back up. And again, make this font bigger. And I'll just go to the top here and what I want to do is to, I'll show how to, shall I do, which one shall I do next? Let's do the, now let's install these utilities first because um, one of them is quite important. Um, the Raspberry Pi doesn't come with a built-in clock. So the only way, well there's two ways of doing this, is to set the time manually, which is not a great idea. And the other thing to do is that we can set up an NTP client to download the uh, time off the internet automatically at boot time. The other thing I'm going to do is to uh, install OpenSSH from here and also wget and that's like really the minimum that's required to get um, going any further with the Raspberry Pi and Linux from scratch if you want to start following the Beyond Linux from scratch book to install further stuff. It just makes things a lot easier. Without it, um, things are quite a bit harder. Um, in actual fact, I think looking at this page, it's reminding me I might go through installing Lynx and GPM as well because they're handy. GPMs are um, uh, like a mouse daemon that allows you to copy and paste in, in the uh, terminals and links is a text based um, web browser that can also be useful to to get going with um, uh, building beyond Linux and scratch and other packages and so on so the first thing I need to do is to go back to the part where we install or uh, mount the virtual file systems. So I need to go back to here. So if I do sudo minus s uh, su minus rather become the root. Just check that the LFS system is mounted. Yes, it is. And just remount these virtual file systems in case anything needs them. Just copy these as I say there. They should all work. We've done it before. Just double check again. There's no errors. And then we can enter the truth environment. Now one thing I will do, if you remember with the... Um, Uh, Linux from scratch user, the LFS user, uh, we actually added in some information to, uh, was it bash profile, I can never remember which one it was, bash, so it's dot, no it was the bash RC. 
we added in some uh, information there. So that's something that can be added into the profile for the root user. So if we edit the root dot bash RC and just add that information into there. Oh sorry this is let's go into troop first. That would be a better idea. I'll always be editing the um NFS uh, the Raspberry Pi system that's not what we want. So I'm gonna go into the troot. Right now I can edit the uh root bash RC the dot bash RC. So I'll just make sure I've got this highlighted. And it just ensures that when we log in as root those environment variables are there. Normally I'll add a uh, an ordinary user um, at the moment because we're still in the true environment, I'm not going to bother with that. The details for adding an ordinary user are in the BLFS book if you wish to follow that. So in theory if I modify this truth um, command and remove all these C flags things we should be able to log in look at the environment variable oh and they haven't been set oh is that because it should be bash profile uh, CD root I get confused with what where these exports should be because in a normal Linux from scratch system um, one loads the contents of the other automatically so I can never remember which is the default one that bash reads it should be profile that makes more sense um, so what I'm going to do is just move because there's nothing else in here there, there isn't an existing bash profile I'm just going to move bash rc to dot bash underscore profile and I'm going to re-log in or re -truit in that's better yeah that now now the bash has read the profile configuration file and we've got the 2c flag um, strings and we've also got the make flags as well so that's good so I don't need that huge troop command anymore I can just use the troop command and if you remember there's a modified troop command. It's not the one to use um, in chapter seven, which is that one there. It's not this one. It's the one. It's basically this without the plus H. It's the one to use at the end of chapter eight, which is uh, where is it? Is it here? Yeah, it's this one here in 8.78. So that's what I've just used to log in. And these extra configs, uh, these extra yeah configuration variables have been set in the um, bash profile file. So what we can do now is to go and install some of these. The first one I'm going to install is um, which one should I do first I'll do the NTP one because that's quite important so it's not there's no link here actually so I'll just pick one I'm going to install wget anyway so I'll leave this tab up I'll just go to the home of beyond Linux from scratch and look for NTP there it is there and you can see if you've never done um, Beyond Linux from Scratch before. I've got videos on Beyond Linux from Scratch. The last one I did was for Linux from Scratch 9.1. Beyond Linux from Scratch 9.1. Fairly similar version to version. There might be slight changes, but um, if you watch the videos, you'll get the gist of how, how to go through it and build it. So, what it's saying here, there's a link to download um, 
the package in for NTP. And then key things to note here, there's some dependencies and the required ones are absolute must. You won't get to build NTP without the requirements being fulfilled. The sometimes recommended, um, I usually always build those as well. And then there's optional ones which you can think, well, do I use that? Would I need that? Would that be handy and so on? So the only requirement we've got here is this IO socket. So let's, I've opened that up in a separate tab with a center click. So I'll get a stack of tabs knowing what I need to build. We've then got requirements again. So make CA and net SSL EAY. And there's a recommended there to access international domain names. So I'm going to load that. Probably don't need it for NTP, but I'm going to load that. Then what I do is go to the last of these and again, follow through what the recommendations are. And it looks like this one hasn't got any recommendations. So this is where we can start with the build for NTP. So you can see quickly this happens with Beyond Linux and Scratch. You think you're going to install one um, package and you get lost in a, uh, a dependency tree, which you have to fulfill in some cases to ensure a successful build.